I am so happy to be able to introduce our first speaker for today. Um, Amara Abbas is the Chief Executive Officer at Extreme Labs, and he is an established IT training author. He's worked with Fortune 500 companies across the globe on their IT infrastructure needs. Prior to joining Extreme Labs, Mr. Abbas was the VP of Global Services at Digital Intelligence Systems, which is a staffing and managed services firm based in McLean, Virginia. Prior to DICES, um, Mr. Abbas was the senior VP at CSS Corporation. He has an extensive IT background as the VP of Managed Hosting Services at Blackboard, the founder and managing director of Grid Technology Partners, and he's also held various senior management positions at Sienna Corporation, Sapphire, UU Net Technologies, and Salomon Brothers. Additionally, he's the author of Grid Computing, a practical guide to technology and applications. And he has been frequently quoted in Business Week, Red Herring, CIO, and other technology publications. Emmer, thank you so much for joining us today. I'll hand it over to you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good evening and good afternoon. Um, I am uh, extremely excited to be presenting today. We had a really great uh, and informative session yesterday. I personally learned a lot and uh, I'm actually going to try and incorporate some of those discussions into my presentation as well. Uh, so what I will be talking about today is really a little bit about the Extreme Lab roadmap, um, some of the new features, et cetera, that we've built, and then also talk broadly about sort of what the future uh, looks like for us, uh, you know, what is the rest of the year's roadmap look like, and then beyond that as well. Uh, so getting started, uh, a couple of uh, years ago, um, so we, we got together and actually sat down and and decided to map out the labs uh, environment and the learning labs market specifically. Um, at that time, there wasn't really a, a category defined for virtual IT labs. Uh, you may see um, categories defined for CRM software. You may see them uh, defined for Salesforce automation software, but there really wasn't anything defined for the virtual IT lab, that at, at least that's what they were called at that time. And we came up with something uh, that was that we call the learning lab maturity model, and we modeled it after uh, the capability maturity model that you many of you might be familiar with. And we said, look, if we were to map um, what we are doing with the lab, uh, with the maturity model, where would um, different lab platforms as well as our particular platform uh, fit in. Uh, so we came up with um, this particular model. We launched it out to the public in June of uh, 2019 and uh, got a really good good feedback. We, we thought we impacted the market as well. Later that year, uh, there was actually a, a virtual lab IT category that was established in uh, the G2 software um, recommendation company. Um, some of the awards organization like the uh, International Business Awards Association, uh, they actually added a virtual IT lab category, uh, not in uh, 2020, but actually in 2021. So last year was the first year they had that and we, uh, Extreme Labs was actually the, the winner of that, that category. Uh, so I think we were able to, as we sort of put this message out, able to help other people understand what uh, virtual labs or learning labs are. Uh, so I'll sort of quickly go through, um, you know, the thought process here. And essentially we said, look, and initially when sort of labs are created, they're essentially a sandbox. So somebody is told, look, you know, to gain experiential learning, here's a sandbox environment, do whatever you want with it. Um, there's no instruction associated with it. All you have is a typically a virtual machine with the appropriate software on it, and you're supposed to be um, able to learn from that. It, it is in a safe environment, so you're not really damaging any of your corporate IT infrastructure, uh, so you can sort of play around in it, and that's why it's called the sandbox environment. And then people say, look, you know, I think we want to be able to offer our learners a little bit more so typically they'll then offer them a sandbox and then there might be an instruction 
guide on the steps that they're supposed to do, and that may typically come as form of a PDF document. Then um, the next sort of step is, you know, if you've got the sandbox, you're giving you some instructions. Uh, let's sort of tie it towards the learning path. So if you, you know, accomplish lab A and then you accomplish lab B and lab C, it actually gets you, you know, closer to your target. And that target might be a certification exam. Uh, then, uh, so the lab platform kind of evolved and, and they said, look, you know, we can have the learning path defined, but let's give the instructor the capability uh, to be able to guide the students. So up until now, you know, most of the, the students that, and the learners that were using the lab platform were kind of doing it uh, by themselves. Uh, so the instructor-led capability is added into the learning uh, lab platform. And what instructor-led uh, capabilities include is being able to define a classroom, being able to give instructors some tools that they can use to monitor uh, learner progress. So one of the key ones is being able to barge into a learner session and help them out if they're getting stuck. Um, and then sort of the next uh, kind of evolution uh, really is to add some level of assessment capability. So the initial assessment capability is to be able to do low stakes uh, type of assessment. So we actually give people hands on exercises and um, they actually do the or attempt to do the exercises and then we'll sort of go back, check and make sure that they got the assessments uh, correct or not. And then we display the results and any of the remedial corrective action right uh, to the learner within the lab platform. And then finally, uh, the, the latest and the final category was to, to be able to take the assessments and make them high stakes, which means that um, we had to sort of build capabilities in the lab environment so that uh, assessments are given, but they're given in a high stakes environment so that they can actually be used for certification related examinations. And so these are sort of some of the you know core capabilities within lab platforms that we mapped out. Uh, and as we built our roadmap uh, over the years, it was really addressing and deepening the capabilities within each one of these particular areas. So if you look at uh, uh, what we have sort of offered um, over the, the last uh, you know, 24 months or 12 months, it's really kind of digs deeper into each one of the areas that form our learning lab maturity model. Uh, so, for example, within uh, the sandbox environment, you know, now we have the capability to not only offer traditional labs on virtual machines uh, that might be running in our data center, but now we have um, and delivered over the last uh, several years the capability to be able to do cloud-based labs, whether they're AWS or Azure or Google Com Compute Cloud. So not only are the, the systems running in the lab, but the lab themselves are teaching you uh, Azure-based or AWS-based content. Uh, so the sandbox sort of capability has, has almost abstracted itself uh, from the lab environment because they can be anywhere and you could be expected to do anything on those particular platforms. Um, and similarly, uh, new capabilities have been added on the instruction side, so you can um, not only see the instruction uh, on within the lab environment, but they tend to be dynamic. So as the uh, as sort of the systems are changing, for example, uh, your cloud platform, they tend to change, you know, every few months the UI changes. So the structure, the instructions uh, can actually become stale. Uh, so making the instructions completely dynamic. So as something changes within, um, within, for example, the Azure portal, uh, a lot of those changes can automatically be updated into the instruction set, uh, adding more capability into the instruction set so that uh, videos can be added or images can be added and that helps the instruct the learner uh, easily get through the particular lab. Um, and then there are a whole slot of slew of capabilities that we've added for the instructor feature so they can run efficient classrooms. We've added the capability uh, so that the um, instructor can add a third party uh, file storage area. So if they want to add additional documentation 
uh, to the lab. They can upload it into our platform and then it gets distributed to the students as they're doing the lab. Uh, when COVID came along, we added uh, the ability to uh, embed the Zoom or uh, Teams information right into the lab platform so the instructor didn't have to distribute that uh, as soon as uh, the learner launched the platform, they would know this is the uh, username and password or the meeting ID for that particular um, particular session that the instructor has selected. So we added uh, you know additional capabilities uh, into uh, into the instructor led features as well. And there were a whole slew of other things that were added um, as well. The UI experience was improved. Um, a uh, new classroom chat feature was added. Uh, we added single sign on. So, you know, if you already had an account with LinkedIn or Microsoft or Google, you could use any of the social uh, sign on capabilities to uh, to leverage our platform. Um, so a lot of uh, a lot of activity again, making sure that so the core learning loss model that we have defined uh, is continually updated and and that is sort of what helps us uh, execute on our roadmap. Um, then we also looked at uh, you know where sort of extreme labs fits in the overall learning journey. And if you look at uh, learners, they may come in essentially three different um, forms. I like to say so they might be self guided learners. They might be uh, people that are uh, getting the help of a training partner as they go through their learning process. So there might be learners that uh, are using the academic route. Uh, to learn particular technology. Um, so we find ourselves being involved in all the different learning paths. If you're a self learner, you can buy, for example, the AWS Wiley uh, study guide and the Extreme Lab labs are associated uh, with that study guide. Um, in the past, there were a lot of courses available on the various mock plat platforms like edX and Coursera. Extreme Labs is integrated with those platforms. So if you're a self-guided learner, you could buy the book, you could uh, leverage these third-party resources, uh, and in both cases, you'd actually get to use the Extreme Labs platform. And then if you were using uh, any of the certification prep uh, platforms, so if you, uh, you could actually uh, find an Extreme Lab lab there as well. So today, uh, if you're preparing for your VMware exam, you can actually uh, get the test prep lab directly from Extreme Labs as well. Uh, if you were a learner and you decided that you wanted to work with um, some of our training companies, so for example, Nan for um, Javier spoke uh, yesterday uh, about what they've been doing in terms of building their platform. Um, and we are fortunate enough that companies like Nan for and New Horizon, Global Knowledge, Pathway, and many others, about a thousand plus of them use our lab as part of their delivery. Um, and there are also some platforms out there that have integrated our labs um, and they're using them both for ILT as well as VILT uh, training as well. So Tidbit is one, Quick Start uh, is another. Uh, so if you again, if you're um, going through sort of the guided learning path, you work with uh, great learning partners around the world or learning platforms and then you will find the labs uh, <coughs> as well. And then certainly from the academic learning part, uh, path. If you go down the academic learning path, uh, you have two options. One, you can also self study. So uh, Mark McKenzie from Kiburu talked yesterday about digital asset management and uh, we actually use their platform to distribute our labs to about 8000 academic institutions around the world. So they are distributing it directly to students uh, and if the uh, professor selects a particular lab for a particular class and they're also available through their distribution platform as well. And then also other uh, platforms where people uh, that might be signing up, for example, for classes in Miami-Dade College, um, our labs are integrated into the curriculum uh, there as well. So lots of different um, uh, you know, ways where people are touching extreme labs. Um, but one thing is is kind of common um, in all these areas is that the the learning content and the labs, um, even though they're sort of integrated in one sense on the other, uh, but typically you have to go to one platform for content 
Uh, and then you have to go to another platform for labs uh, as well. So that's something that we, you know, we found uh, that was pretty interesting as we looked at Extreme Labs uh, and how it was sort of used in the learning uh, journey. So that kind of led us to question uh, the learning lab maturity model. So uh, when we rolled uh, this model out in 2019, we ended um, with the article that we had written and we said, look, you know, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Uh, and that was uh, quoting George Fox, who's a famous British statistician. Um, but the learning lab maturity model really kind of helped define the lab platform itself. Uh, so the, now the next thing for us as we look uh, out in the next several years is to kind of take the next step forward, which is uh, to not look at the labs as a standalone sort of activity that is being done in the overall learning journey, uh, but try to see what other roles uh, and where else can um, the lab fit in as part of uh, the overall learning experience. Uh, so what we have now defined is uh, something that we're calling the adaptive experiential learning uh, architecture. And so now we're, we still believe that the LCMM or the uh, learning lab maturity model is valid, uh, but we want to expand that into a more broader architecture that looks at uh, all the other things that are involved in the learning journey. So you'll still see the um, L2MM uh, model uh, as part of uh, our overall roadmap. We continue to expand on uh, the different types of labs that can be built on our platform. We'll continue to challenge ourselves on the different types of assessments that can be delivered through the platform. Uh, but we'll look uh, and continue to expand into other areas as well. So let me talk uh, briefly about a few, a few of those. So the first one is really the content piece. Um, you know, with the recent announcement that Microsoft made where they've ungated uh, all the mock content uh, and that is sort of available on MS Learn, um, a lot of other companies like Amazon Web Services, Salesforce have already ungated a lot of their content. So that actually allows us um, the opportunity to do sort of seamless integration between the Extreme Labs platform and uh, the platforms that are running the ungated content. So MS Learn, for example, uh, we've done the integration. We'll talk a little bit about it in the next uh, couple of slides. Uh, but what that allows us uh, to do is instead of people logging into a particular platform, then hopping into the labs environment, we can actually flip the story so they can come to the labs environment and then have access to the content uh, right there as well. Um, the other uh, area within the overall architecture is really kind of the mentoring and guided capability that we want to be able to add. And, and that is really the most common uh, element right now is chat. So both asynchronous and synchronous chat should be available within the platform so that uh, depending on who is uh, being allocated to guide the learner, whether it's a mentor it's an actual instructor uh, at a training institution. It's an academic uh, based instructor. They have the ability to do both asynchronous and say synchronous guiding of the students, whether they're in the classroom, outside the classroom. Um, in both cases, uh, the chat capability can be uh, there as well. Uh, the other element that uh, Javier from Nanfor actually talked about was the AI cognitive sort of knowledge base. So, you know, are there uh, capabilities that can be built in, and it looks like Nanfor has already built those where uh, we can look at known uh, challenges that learners have and uh, sort of be able to build the AI cognitive engine to kind of help them along in that process. Um, uh, the other areas is really uh, around study groups. So can we aggregate a uh, disparate group of students within our platform to be able to help them out um, help them out as well as a study together. Um, and then um, uh, looking at kind of an adaptive engine. Uh, so as we are releasing, as the students are doing different types of activities, can we release content um, as they finish uh, different sets? So building an adaptive engine um, within the platform is kind of the next thing. And there are also third party adaptive engines that uh, can be integrated and, and both 
sort of options are open, whether they're built into the Extreme Loss platform or whether we use some other adaptive engine. Uh, but having that adaptive capability is extremely important. Um, the other capability that you, we want to see within the architecture is kind of the recommender engine. Uh, and this is really recommending learners to different types of content as they're going through, through labs. And that really tied to the next uh, bullet point within the architecture, which is the learning style. So a lot of people uh, obviously are coming to the labs environment because they want hands-on experiential learning. But even within that, there might be people that uh, like uh, and are more comfortable with the auditory style of uh, learning. There might be more visual uh, learners within um, our learning community. And obviously the kinesthetic ones uh, we know are, are using our labs and like the hands-on component. But to supplement that, uh, if we can judge the learning style or even uh, get them to tell us their learning style, then additional content and additional types of content uh, can then be added uh, into the platform. And that could again be the auditory stuff, it could be visual, uh, etc. And then finally, all the work that's being done within the platform is really hands-on work. So the learners that are going through and um, executing the different exercises, whether they are purely on training labs, whether they are assessment labs, they're actually building a portfolio of work. Uh, but today, as soon as the lab ends, uh, that's uh, pretty much it. They haven't sort of captured their work in some sort of portfolio that can then be added into um, their capabilities uh, representation, whether it's on their resumes, whether it's through LinkedIn badges, etc. But also at the same time, it are there ways that we can sort of help capture their work in a portfolio that they can then use as part of their credentials. Um, and then finally, live streaming. Streaming, and that's again, uh, you know, something we've thought uh, about a lot. You've got things like Twitch, uh, and got other live stream platform. People are have, are running chess games on Twitch today, and apparently there are millions of followers for those live streams. So, is there the ability for us to uh, have live streams available as a feature, which then can be used by instructors uh, broadly uh, as labs are being executed? And all of these capabilities will continue to be delivered through an open environment. So we already are delivering the entire um, learning um, learning lab maturity model is completely open through the LTI um, standards. And then we've also launched the Extreme Labs API, which essentially uh, currently delivers all the back end admin capabilities that we have today. Um, to the learners, um, and now we are uh, we would be extending all of that into the architecture as well. And then finally, from a purely uh, uh, marketing perspective, we also want to be able to allow uh, our our customers to be able to completely brand the this entire architecture and be able to deliver it as if it it is. Um, completed their own uh, because a lot of the capabilities, for example, on the content space, uh, and I'll show a little bit about, uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in the next couple of minutes. Uh, all of those are um, essentially uh, generated by our customers. Uh, so they are sort of adding content uh, into the, the platform, then we also want to give them the ability to completely brand it as much uh, as they can. Um, while keeping kind of the, the lab workspace uh, still um, available to the students uh, so they can easily do the lab without uh, shrinking that workspace uh, for them. Um, so that is uh, sort of the overall direction that we'll be taking uh, as part of sort of moving away from just kind of the core lab capability to much more broad, broader capabilities that are centered around the experiential learning that the labs provide um, both the students and then uh, also uh, capabilities that the instructors can leverage as well. Uh, so a few items, items that are in the green, for example, the branding, the content and chat, those are capabilities that are already available. So we, so people can actually start using them. Others are in various uh, uh, forms of development. The Extreme Labs API is also available today in 
Uh, it probably captures about 80 to 90 percent of our backend operations that can now be um, controlled by any other application through the API. Uh, so from a branding perspective, the simple thing uh, is uh, when, when learners log in, uh, they can see um, uh, our customers' logos. And here we're using our friends from Office Pro, one of the learning partners in the US. Uh, we're using their logo here. But the most important thing here is to look at the URL. So now there's the ability to uh, create sort of learning partner uh, and then and then we can work with you to uh, essentially remap that to whatever uh, URL that works for you. So whenever um, the learners are given a URL, they'll sort of come to this particular platform uh, and it'll be branded uh, as well. So we want to keep it simple. Uh, so the branding will include the logos as well as the color selection that might map to your particular brand as well. Um, so that capability, uh, once once uh, learners are in, they've launched their lab, the branding within the lab platform already exists. So you can um, you put in your logo, you can put in uh, some welcome message uh, on the header and footer of the lab environment uh, today. Um, the next uh, sort of capability that's available is really the synchronous and asynchronous chat. So today, uh, instructors can enable chat within their classroom and um, it is both synchronous, so if people are actually doing labs, they can see the messages, but it is also asynchronous, which means that if anybody leaves a message and types a message, it is kept there. So once the instructor logs back in, um, they can answer answer that. Or if chat is enabled for communication amongst the students as well, then the students will see the chat chats as well. They won't get deleted, and um, and then the, and then those can be answered as well. Um, Anybody that is defined in the instructor role, and they could, no, they don't necessarily have to be an instructor. They can be a mentor. Uh, they can be uh, somebody that's just guiding uh, the learner, learners. They will have uh, and actually have this capability available to them uh, today as well. Um, the third thing, and the most important thing that I wanted to mention, um, is uh, the new capability that we've added to integrate content right into the lab's environment. So in the past, uh, if uh, any student logged into the lab's environment, they would just see the lab modules, and these are the white tiles that you see in the platform. Um, but with our, our recent uh, development efforts and integration with MS Burn, uh, now there's the ability to add the blue tiles, which are essentially your external content. Uh, so this is, for example, the PL300, uh, data analytics uh, Power BI course. In this particular case, uh, um, you have uh, the PL300 on MS Learn uh, tile available. So as soon as you click to go to lesson, it'll take you to that content. Um, in addition, we've also sort of looked at third party sources and compiled other relevant content as well. So you've got your uh, knowledge checks that you can put in. You can um, put links into the community. Uh, Power BI community, there are other tons of resources that uh, can be added. Uh, but most importantly, this is all configurable. So uh, an instructor or the admin uh, can go in and define the blue tiles um, and point them to whatever makes uh, relevant sense to them. And this is where uh, if you're a learning partner or if you're an instructor or if you're somebody that's producing content, uh, this is where you can actually enrich uh, the learner experience. So they'll get the, the base content and the official content from the technology provider, um, or it might be your own, but you also have the ability to just tremendously enrich the learner experience uh, by adding your own content. Uh, you actually don't have to uh, build any backend platform. You just need us, uh, you need, just need to help us uh, with a pointer to your content. It'll show up and be available to the learners here as well. And then if you actually launch a one of the lab modules, uh, the content is available to the students in those particular uh, lab modules as well. Um, we're doing uh, almost weekly webinars where we go into a lot more detail in this integration. Um, so we'd be happy to, um, we'd love for you guys to join them and we can go in a lot into detail and specifically for those that are uh, Microsoft Learning Partners, uh, this particular capability um, 
will uh, register uh, any launches from Extreme Lab platform uh, uh, into the MS Learn uh, uh, portal. Uh, so you will be able to uh, meet the KPI uh, credits uh, that are required uh, as well. So anytime uh, a student launches the MS Learn uh, lesson tile, uh, your MPN ID will automatically get embedded into the URL that's created. And that will get picked up by the MS Learn platform and then you'll get the credit for that launch. So uh, as a learning partner, you actually don't have to do any level of integration. Um, and so right out of the gate, you will be uh, getting the KPI credits. And, and this uh, service is a managed service uh, that's built by Extreme Lab. So any changes that happen to the MS Learn API, we're responsible for uh, making sure that uh, everything is updated on our end as well. Um, so that is uh, sort of a quick uh, presentation on uh, the Extreme Lab roadmap. I'll kind of end by um, by uh, by saying that uh, you know last year's conference uh, generated almost uh, 150,000 words uh, worth of of um, of content. Uh, of uh, thought leadership and uh, we actually took uh, you know a lot of that content uh, shrunk it down a little bit and i have actually now uh, launched a book called experiential learning the future of workforce development and that includes um, kind of highly edited versions of the talk that were given uh, by by our presenters last year so it's about 180 pages uh, worth of, uh, of material that's available now, and uh, and that's why I'm extremely thankful for all our presenters that have uh, presented uh, and put in the effort to uh, to es essentially assemble this great knowledge base that uh, you know gets used uh, many 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 times over. So uh, there are people that are attending this conference. Uh, as soon as the conference ends in a couple of weeks, we'll have individual video videos for all the sessions that are available uh, they get posted um, and they're available for people to utilize afterwards uh, the content gets transcribed assembled into uh, this book uh, that is now going to be available it's actually available on amazon now but available for everybody to purchase um, that sort of continues to put that thought leadership out there uh, for the community and that is uh, extremely important uh, for us as well. Uh, again, this is a fairly nascent uh, area where we are in. As I mentioned earlier in my presentation, uh, there really wasn't even a, a experiential learning virtual IT lab category up until two or three years ago. Uh, and all of us and all of you that are attending, that are presenting, uh, are really uh, helping us lay the groundwork for a very vibrant and very exciting sector of the educational technology market. Uh, so with that, I will end my presentation and uh, and take any questions.